Hi there, Matt Allingson here. Today is Thursday the 12th of January. This is update number 15. Three links on the screen, the video link, the interactive report link, and also the link to find out about how to learn how to build the Power BI reports that I've been showing you during my videos. Okay, let's jump in and have a look at what's happening at Big Bend. Okay, so here we are in the lower system map in my interactive report. The data has been updated for today, the 12th of January. Uh, you would know if you've been following closely, um, the peak has actually passed Big Ben now. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Um, you'll recall if we look at lock one, so lock one was the lock at Blanchetown, which is the last lock before Swan Reach, which is the best measuring point to look at Big Bend. Um, you'll notice, um, and I'll just refresh your memory, that we lost contact with the measurement on uh, the 10th of December was the last measurement. So basically the water went above the lock and hence the measurement was either no longer accurate or no longer able to be uh, measured and therefore they've stopped measuring that. And that's created a whole lot of problems in trying to analyze this data and we'll have a look at the overlay maps uh, in a moment. Um, importantly you'll see that um, this flow from SA, let's have a look at how long ago that peaked. So um, the decline, uh, if we go all the way back down here, so red means it's going up and so about here 6th of December it went up and down flat for a bit, went up a little bit more and then it's so still going up. So it looks like the peak in the flow to South Australia, which is one of the points that we're measuring, it peaked on the 23rd of December. And so orders of magnitude that leaves one week in December and we're sort of two weeks in. So about three weeks ago, the peak um, hit at the point flow to SA. There's a couple of questions in the comments on YouTube and someone said, where did the rest of the water go? Because we had 238 gigalitres a day coming through lock 10 and it's peaked at 186 at the flow to SA. And we know that the water hasn't gone into Lake Victoria. This chart's not working, but we know the water hasn't gone into Lake Victoria. Um, and there were some people earlier on watching my videos speculated that this exact thing would happen. You can see back in 2016, the peak flow at Lock 10, actually almost all of it went through to flow to SA, but back in 93, it went from 140 to 111. So it seems to me that once the water gets over a certain threshold, let's call that threshold 110 for the lack of any better data, um, the or 140 at this end, not all the water is going to flow through. So it's either because the water goes up and out and into the floodplains, which if that is the case, the assumption is that when the water goes down, it will come back in and then flow down the stream again. So if that's true, I would expect the peak to sustain for some period of time. And um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, in the coming weeks, how quickly the water falls. And if the peak flow is, as I just described it, I would expect that the peak um, into SA and at Lock One and at Swan Reach, etc., will be sustained as those floodwaters in the backwaters come back into the main river system. But this is just pure speculation on my part. Uh, the other reason the numbers could be different could be a measuring issue. So maybe there's more water coming down than the, the flow meters are actually measuring. And so if that's the case, then effectively a lot of this analysis is null and void anyway. Let's go and have a look at um, what's happening upstream in the Murray Basin. So you can see here that um, pretty much all of these river systems now are well peaked and this main water, the, the stuff that we have to watch out for is this water coming down the Darwin. So if we just jump over to the Darwin now, you'll see there's the peak 200 gigalitres at Burke. These numbers are getting lower and lower consistent with what we saw in the Murray data between flow to SA and lock one, um, and also um, lock 10 and the flow to SA. Seems we have a peak here of around 107 at Wilcannia. So, um, so that's at this point four. I know there's been some press and discussion about the Medindy Lakes filling up and the back, there's a lot of backwaters and wetlands in around here. So once again, it's gonna be very hard to, to understand how much water is going to come through. But I would expect at some point in time um, coming into Wentworth, uh, which is the Batundi point, we're gonna see uh, an increase here somewhere. 
Lachlan's not really an issue. There's really not a lot of um, water upstream. I mean, the, the water coming in from Bell Ranald um, is way off its peak now. So, yes, yeah, so not bad news. You can have a look at those interactive charts yourself. Um, let's go back and have a look at this um, relationship between the flow to SA and lock one. So you may recall if you've watched some of the earlier videos that uh, there is a delay. So the water comes through flow to SA first and then it hits lock one. And I was able to make an assessment. It's just a sort of a bit of an eyeball. It appears to be about a 14 day delay. So 14 days after the water hits uh, flow to SA, it should hit um, lock one and then it flows down to Swan Ridge from there. But keep in mind what I said before that I expect there's some water out in the wetlands, backwaters. And so as those waters come back in, it may uh, extend the period of time in which the, the flow waters continue through. Um, I did go back and check my notes at Big Bend. I did make some notes as the water levels were going up. Um, had some scouts on the ground at Big Bend telling me uh, what was going on. So on the 16th of November, um, the, the water was 10 centimetres over the road. Uh, so the height of the water was 3.23 at Swan Reach on the 16th of November. And at that point in time, it was 10 centimetres over the road to get into Big Bend. Um, and it looks to me from these notes that the road became inaccessible around 25th of November or thereabouts. And so, of course, the big question now is when will the road or when will the waters drop so that the shacks are no longer flooded? And then secondly, at what point will we be able to get access back into the area via vehicle to see what's going on? Now, I just had to refresh the report, but I do have a new report here, which I'm calling Fall, where I'm trying to get an understanding of how quickly are the water levels going to fall. So just let me show you what's on this new report. First of all, I have brought across those data points that I've been recording. I talked about just briefly a moment ago. So these are the key dates with the key levels of everything that's occurred. And what I've done here is I've created a scatter chart and I've overlaid the river level at Swan Reach in metres, and I've overlaid that against the flow to SA. And you can see that there's a relationship. So as the flow to SA increases, the water level at Swan Reach increases. Of course, we know that there's this delay, um, maybe or give or take. I mean, we were doing the delay through to Blanchetown. Swan Reach is a bit further down. So at a guess, it's about a three week delay. So, so you can't assume that when the water was going up, the delay is going to be looking different than when the water is going down. But using this chart and also the data here, we can have a look at a couple of key points. Now, um, we also took some photos on the way up and kept the dates that the photos were taken because these will be great reference points in the future. And anyone from uh, Big Bend or anywhere else who also have photos, I encourage you to, to keep those photos aside because the photos are the record of the water level at your premises. And if, as long as you've got the date of those photos, we'll know in future what's gonna happen when the flood happens again. So this photo here, this is our shack here on the left. And so on the 12th of December, you can see that it wasn't quite under. Um, and then on the 14th of December, it's a bit hard to see here, but the shack is under. So based on these two data points, these two photos, my assumption is that, that our shack, um, basically um, the water level hit the bottom of the shack on the 13th of December. And so now I can go back to the 13th of December and see that the water level at Swan Reach was 5.93. So now I know that when Swan Reach hits 5.93 or six, let's call it six, uh, we got a problem with our shack. At the time on the 13th of December, the flow to SA was coming through at 170 gigalitres, but don't forget that delay, and I'm calling it about three weeks. So basically you have to go back till about Christmas day. So when the flow to SA the 131 gigalitres flow to SA made its way down through Lock 1, through to Swan Reach and Big Bend. When that 131 gigalitres per day hit Big Bend, that's the point that our shacks went under. And therefore, my assumption is that once the um, flow to SA with the three-week delay 
gets back to 131 gigalitres again, notwithstanding the water that's going to come in from the backwaters that we don't really understand that yet. So, um, but we basically need the flow to SA to get back to 131 uh, gigalitres per day. And then three weeks after that, I would expect, give or take, to see the, um, the shacks become um, out of the water again. And so with that in mind, today, 12th of January, the flow to SA is 134, so that's good news. Um, and so once that 134 makes it all the way downstream, remember because the backwaters are coming in, that there might be a slight change in pattern here. In fact, look how quickly the water level increased as the flow increased. And you can notice here that it's going down more slowly. So the, the slope of this behavior is, is uh, or the slope of this chart is less when it's coming down than when it went up. So I would, I'm, I'm making this up now, but if we say it took three weeks on the way up, chances are it's gonna be four or more weeks on the way down. So here we are, this 134. So it's the 12th of January. My best guess is it's going to be mid-February before the shacks are um, basically, or before the water is below the, the entry level of our shack and other people went under sooner than us. Uh, this is the, the photo of the shack on the, on the 6th of January. So then the other piece of information that's important is when we'll be able to access the road again by vehicle. So if we assume that this is the point at 3.6, um, this was the 25th of November. So let's go back to the 25th of November, this 3.6 level. The, uh, the flow to SA was about 131. But of course, that's before the delay. So we need to go back um, approximately three weeks. So let's take it back to the 4th of November. It was about 87. So this would suggest that we need the flow to SA to get back to 87 and then wait for three weeks after that, three to four weeks after that, before we'll be able to access the shacks again. So the water is falling, but it's not falling super quick. And at this stage, it looks like some time before the road's gonna be accessible again. But anyway, that's my analysis. These are my opinions. I don't have all the data available for me, but hopefully you found this useful. If you have a different view, please let me know in the comments below.